One of the most important principles of the Reformation was that the church needs to constantly be reformed according to the word of God. I think it's a principle we would do well to pay close attention to here in this 500th anniversary of the Reformation. I was reading through Martin Luther's 95 Theses not too long ago that he posted on the Wittenberg Castle Church door in October of 1517, and I noticed especially thesis number 54, you know, all the 95 theses are about indulgences, but thesis number 54 reads this way, wrong is done to the word of God if one and the same sermon spends as much or more time on indulgences as on the word of the gospel. Now, nobody today is preaching about indulgences, I would assume, but we do often in our churches preach about all kinds of things other than the word of God. I think we need to go back to the clear expository preaching of the word of God. The church needs constant exposure to God's word as preachers and teachers in the church our touchstone ought to be God's word. We should trust that word. We should lay it before people and watch it take effect among them. The result will be the reformation of the church. When we do this, we speak from a position of authority, not because we are authoritative people, but because the word of God is authoritative. The Reformation, I think, was only successful because it stood upon the authority of the Word of God. You know, Luther is reported to have said at the famous Diet of Worms in 1521, unless I am convicted by scripture and plain reason, I do not accept the authority of popes and councils for they have contradicted each other my conscience is captive to the word of God. He and other reformers were like a lowly ship's crew down in the bowels of the ship who noticed that the ship was heading in the wrong direction, that the, the captain and the officers of the ship were taking the ship to disaster. And even though they were lowly sailors, they had a map the scriptures, and they could point to that map. And everyone who uh, read the scriptures clearly and sensibly could see that what they were pointing to was the truth. They weren't pointing to their ideas and their opinions. They were pointing to the word of God. And I think one reason that the Reformation was as successful as it was is that they stood upon the authority of the scriptures. So in the church today, my hope is that we will uh, preach and teach the Bible, that we'll trust the Bible, that when, if we're pastors, we come into the pulpit, we will explain the Bible clearly in the clear expository preaching of God's word. One of my favorite reformers is William Tyndale. Maybe that's because I teach Greek here at Beeson Divinity School, and Tyndale was a linguist. And he loved the Greek language, was very competent in Greek, and uh, read the classics. But one of the most, the most important reason for which he learned Greek and read the classics was so that he could faithfully translate the scriptures into English. He finished his English translation of the scriptures in Germany. It wasn't safe for them to be published in England in 1526, but when he did publish uh, his first New Testament in 1526 in Germany, it was in England, it was in English, and uh, it, he was able to get it smuggled across the English Channel in merchant vessels and bales of cotton. Only two copies of that first 1526 edition still exist, and one of them is heavily damaged. 
But you can look at the other copy, or a page or two of it at least, on the website of the British Library, and I hope you'll find that image of Tyndale's New Testament on that website and have a look at it, because it's instructive. The physical condition, or the physical layout of that New Testament, I think, is quite instructive. It's just the New Testament in English with a few delightful illuminations at the beginning of each biblical book, a few illustrations. There's no commentary, there are no study notes, there are no footnotes, just straightforward early 16th century English, the language of uh, the Cotswolds in England where William Tyndale grew up. It's uh, in a pocket edition that could easily be uh, carried and hidden if necessary so that working people, merchants and farmers could read it if they could read or could maybe even take it to someone who could read to them if they could not read. It was a way of trusting the Word of God. Tyndale's hope was that simply the Word of God laid out in front of people in a way that they could read and understand it could be transformative in their lives. I think today we also need to trust the Word of God in the same way that the Reformers did. When we teach it, when we preach it, first of all, we need to do so often in our churches, and when we teach it and preach it, the focus needs to be on the clear exposition of the Word of God. Let's trust it, let's lay it out there so that people can hear it and understand it. And the result will be a more faithful church that is true to this wonderful principle of the Reformation.